Good evening. We're so glad that you are here for our first Good Friday today service in the sanctuary in three years. And it has been such an amazing week to know that no matter what size group we have, that we are able to gather in person. It's so meaningful to have you here tonight. We hope that you'll come back and join us again tomorrow. We have our um, Holy Saturday prayer vigil from 9 until 5 tomorrow. You are welcome to stop by at any time uh, in Fellowship Hall to pray quietly for half an hour. It's a time, as I say over and over, during that first Holy Week, no one knew that Jesus would rise the next day. And so imagine tomorrow, wherever you are, what that must have felt like. We get by and tend to hop over it because we know what's coming. But I think it makes our experience richer when we take time to imagine the suffering, the loneliness, and the sadness that are a part of life. And then, of course, join us Sunday morning at 1030 for our Resurrection Easter service. And again, we're so looking forward to having people here in the building. For our friends joining us on Zoom, I invite you to turn on the lighting where you are and perhaps light a candle or two so that you are in the same kind of space that we are here. Because tonight's worship is in the style of Tze. It comes from the Tze community, a monastic order devoted to peace and justice through prayer and meditation that was founded by Brother Roger Stutz in 1940 in Burgundy, France. The liturgy of Tze is designed to quiet the soul and to gradually, through the repetition of music and periods of silence, lead participants into a place of deep quiet and spiritual growth, where we can be still and at peace in the presence of God. So I invite you now, if you haven't done so, to silence your phone, to take a few deep breaths, to clear away the chaos of your day. Ground yourself comfortably in your seat. Close your eyes and let yourself rest in the care of the God who loves us beyond measure. These opening words are from Anne Sidal, a spiritual director in the Uniting Church of Australia. Today is one of the gray days of the Christian year, a day when the lights are dimmed and the sky feels overcast, even if it isn't. A day when theologians and poets feel as if a heavy veil is drawn over heart and mind, an inexplicably sad day. In the gray light of early morning, after a night in the ecclesiastical high court and denial by one in his own circle, Jesus found himself at the gates of the reluctant Pilate who promptly tried to hand him back to the Jews. And though the sun rose that morning, the whole world turned gray for one who found himself without friend or helper, faced with drinking a cup that he prayed would be turned away from him, knowing that life was about to be drained out of him. We are invited to accompany Jesus through this gray day, to be witnesses to his suffering, 
to keep silence before his cry of dereliction. In our imaginations, let us trudge through Jerusalem until we come to the place of the cross, and then let us not turn our faces away. Here is a day marked by the brokenness of the world, but it is not a day to wallow in misery or to indulge in morbid thoughts about the crucifixion. It is simply a somber, dignified day when we remember how it was for Jesus. And we find at the foot of the cross a place to lay down ours and the world's sorrows. On gray days, it is hard to see clearly, difficult to understand things that aren't clear. Yet all we are asked to do today is to be present to the sacred story as it is retold and to the inexplicable, mysterious, wondrous transaction that was and still is taking place. Let us share our opening prayer as together we pray these words quietly. Come to me. Today, at the foot of the cross, give us renewed trust and love. Teach us that the darkest human hour is the brightest divine moment, that where human disgrace sinks to its nadir, divine glory reaches its zenith. Teach us again that there is no limit to your love and no exclusion glow to your salvation. Amen.
reflect on these meditative words by writer, artist, and United Methodist pastor, Jan Richardson. You will know this blessing by how it does not stay still, by the way it refuses to rest in one place. You will recognize it by how it takes first one form, then another, now running down the face of the mother who watches the breaking of the child she had born. Now in the stance of the woman who followed him here and would not leave him bereft. Now it twists in anguish on the mouth of the friend whom he loved. Now it bears itself in the wound, the cry, the finishing and the final breath. This blessing is not in any one of these alone. It is what binds them together. It is what dwells in the space between them, though it be torn and gaping. It is what abides in the tear the rending makes. Please, please join me in this psalm of lament. I will read selected verses of the text and ask that you join together in singing the response when it appears on the screen. We'll begin with the response, which we will sing twice so that you can hear the tune. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. From my vows, I will pay before those who fear God. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek God shall praise God. May your hearts live forever. 
all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to God, and all the families of the nations shall worship before God. For dominion belongs to God, and God rules over the nations. Oh God, do not be far away. Oh God, do not be far away. Reading from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of Luke. It was now about noon, and the darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into you your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered around there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. At this time, I invite you, <clears throat> excuse me, to take a few moments to silently read the meditation found on your handout, and then to reflect on the message of Father Henry Nowen. In these moments of silence, as you feel moved to do so, take a stone from the stand at the base of the stairs and drop it in the bowl of water as a recognition of your full to the brim faith and as a symbol that you are a precious, beloved child of God, a God whose grace is overflowing.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. We believe that the crucifixion shows us the worst in humanity. We believe that Jesus shows us the best in humanity. So today, as one voice, we choose the latter. Let it be so. Amen. Please reflect on these words by John Vandelar, a minister of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. This day seems to be all about death, Jesus. What else is it when you are arrested, accused, beaten, betrayed, crucified? But when we look a little closer, we discover it's really all about life, integrity unbowed by expediency, love unchanged by hatred, humility undeterred by power, truth untainted by lies, and real, vibrant, fearless life breaking through it all. You died, Jesus, because you refused to settle for anything less than genuine, eternal life for you and for us all. Teach us to live by the same creed, to refuse to cling to a life that is less than real, less than honest, humble and loving, and to be so resolute in our quest for life that we will always be ready to die in order to find it and share it. Amen.
Will you join me in prayer? When I pause and the words appear on the screen, please join in singing together the Kyrie eleison. Listen first to the tune so that you are a bit familiar. Let us pray. If the cross tells us anything, holy God, it is that you know and share our suffering. You are with us and with all those who are victims of disease, of violence or abuse of others, of our own ignorance, foolishness, or sin. Help us and restore us, O oh God. You are with us and all those who inflict pain on others and on our world through our selfishness or greed, through our brokenness or anger, through our rigidity or need to be right. Help us and restore us, O oh God. You are with us, and all those who are fearful of threats to this world we call home, to our safety and survival, to our sense of community and togetherness as people. Help and restore us, O oh God. See our need of your grace. Hear our prayer for your mercy and come to us again to help and restore because we know we cannot heal ourselves. In the silence and the fading light of this day, please come forward as you feel moved and pound a nail in the cross on the chancel steps, praying as you do for an end to the pain and oppression that still exists in our world today.
Let us join together now, each in the language most comfortable for you, as we share in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Creator, who art. The story has been told, and now we return to the world where we live and wait. No, the worship continues while we wait and watch. Our worship will close after the stone has been removed and the flame of hope has been relit. While we wait, while the darkness covers the land of faith, remember that no matter how abandoned we may feel, we are not alone.
crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, sometime it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Ooh. Mm-hmm. 